We begin in West Africa. It's market day in Dutsu, a provincial town in northern Nigeria. The clay pots that these men carry are an invention that's changing the way this country copes with its climate and have become a catalyst for change in society here. They are the brainchild of a man who's seen the future lying in Nigeria's past. Jigawa State, where the fertile green of West Africa gives way to the barren beauty of the Sahara. For the people who live in the remote villages here, existence is shaped by the extremes of climate, poverty, and a Muslim culture that's remained unchanged for hundreds of years. Hey! Untouched by modernization, Subsistence farmers look to their children for labor in the fields and security for the future. Mohammed Ba Aba is a teacher who grew up in this region and is now driven by a desire to improve living conditions for the people here. These villages are locked in the hinterland. They have no access roads. They have no electricity. They have no pipe bone water. But then what can you do when the money is not there? Families are dependent on crops which must survive conditions from unrelenting rainfall to punishing Saharan heat before they can be harvested. Those with crops to sell head to the local market outside Dutsi, where they face further problems caused by the climate. Fresh goods decay rapidly in the sun and need to be sold as quickly as possible, forcing the price down and depriving farmers of much needed income. The biggest single problem for the farmers is the lack of preservation for their crops. The climate here is too harsh. This is a very dry region. This is an example of one farmer who picked this spinach this morning. As you can already see, it is wilting away and falling apart. As well as causing serious financial problems for the farmers, rotting food was also a major health threat as a breeding ground for disease and source of malnutrition. Mohammed set about looking for a solution. It would have to be cheap, simple to use, and available everywhere. For inspiration, he looked to traditional African technology in the form of the humble clay pot. The earthen pot is an indigenous traditional technology, not only in Nigeria here, but in all African societies. As a small boy growing up in the village, I developed interest in the powers of the pot. I know it cools, but then people use it just to store ordinary drinking water. Then I started contemplating, how can it be used for other things as well, if it can cool? Then I started making experiments with the pot. Mohammed tested his ideas with a small group of farmers. The theory was to create a cooling effect through evaporation. The results were an immediate success. The system consists of two pots, a bigger outer pot and a smaller inner one. Now, the farmer is required to put fine river sand in between the smaller inner pot and the bigger outer pot and to keep it moist. And when wind is blowing, it will cool the surface of the outer pot. This cool effect can, is now transmitted via the sun to the inner pot. It will then close it up like this, so as to uh, prevent germs, microbes, and what have you. Something like the spinach can last for days, as against the only one or two days it will last under normal circumstances. Something like tomatoes last for 21 days, as against the two or three days that it normally lasts. Mohammed's next challenge to get enough pots made for the project to take off across Jigo Estate. As the grandson of a village pot maker, he was keen to provide employment where other industries will not go because of the lack of electricity or proper roads. So he established five pot factories in remote villages 
where he's now a regular visitor. Clay is shaped entirely by hand. There are no potter's wheels here, no machinery of any kind, just the skills passed down from father to son. Traditional pot making has been in serious decline since the arrival of lightweight aluminium pots and pans. But Mohammed's factory has revived these skills and given a new sense of purpose to young pot makers, such as Ibrahim Mubandi. I grew up here and learned the pot making trade in this village. Although I mostly work here, I now also visit other villages to make pots, and this has become the most important skill I have. People can see how valuable this skill has become today. The special pots sell very well, so now lots of people are interested in learning the trade. They can see for themselves how beneficial this factory has been for us. This factory produces up to 300 pots each day. After drying in the sun, the final stage of the process is to bake the pots in open fires overnight. <laughs> In the morning, finished pots are loaded onto a cart for the long trek to Dutsen. <laughs> Having established his factories, Mohammed set about distributing his new invention. I single-handedly financed the first 5,000 pot, pot import system from my meagre salary. And after that, when a product is new, you have to test market the product. So I decided to give them for free of charge at first in five villages. Mohammed launched a solid marketing campaign to spread the word that the humble clay pot could change people's lives. The weekly market attracts people from all over the north of Nigeria and as far afield as Niger and Chad. Mohammed now sells his pots here, and prospective buyers can also see the pot in pot system in use. It's been adopted by traders, who recognize that fresh goods fetch a better price. And there's no need to settle for a quick sale, as the produce will last for several days. Mohammed's pots are also helping the young girls, sent here by their families to sell fresh produce. For these girls, going to school is out of the question. To sell is a must for them. If these girls don't sell, these items normally spoil. This is a withdrawal of the much needed income by families. The pot import system will liberate these children. All of these items can now be preserved at home in the pots, sold only on demand, and they will be free to go back to schools. The clay pot, a cornerstone of Nigeria's past, is now helping to shape its future. Mohammed is now extending the project across the whole of northern Nigeria and to neighboring countries, using traditional technology to make a real difference. For a country like Nigeria, which has over 140 million people, the government cannot be the sole provider of everything. So people will have to act, and act very fast. Think of other ways and means through which people can survive. Traditional initiatives, cultural initiatives will help as well of which the pot is one and is helping. <laughs>